FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is May 9th, 2017. Well, gold is getting hit again, which we totally expected. We knew that this second quarter, getting close to the summer slam down, was right around the corner. Here we are. It's happening. Is it cause for alarm? Ned Schmidt is with us now. You know Ned Schmidt quite well. His erstwhile publications, the Valley View Gold Report and the Agri-Food Value View. Ned, welcome back. Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Doing great. So I'd be doing better if gold was doing better, but I totally get what's happening here. Uh, tell us, the uh, stock market seems to be the place to be, huh? Well, that's what it was. You know, even Superman had one fear, and that was kryptonite. I mean, the, the man of steel was afraid of something. For us to be afraid of nothing, <laughs> show you how, uh, what's the word to describe us, Gary? Hubris. Foolish? Hubris. Hubris. Hubris kills a lot of people. It kills a lot of career. But what we were talking about earlier, Gary, was the VIX, the, the fear index that it's called, the volatility index. And, and what brought it to mind, I was using my Crocodile Dundee method of research, you know, just walking around. And MarketWatch.com ran, they run two articles because they had to correct the date, <laughs> on the VIX hitting a record low this week. Now, the VIX, you can go on the Internet and look it up. You still won't know anything <laughs> because it's the square root of the implied variance. What the heck does that doesn't mean? mean? Which does not mean a lot to many people. <laughs> But what it is, is when we have a low value on the VIX, it means that nobody is scared of the stock market. It's going to go straight up. It's only a matter of which day Apple hits a trillion dollar market cap. And that's a value generally under 15. When everybody's scared and the stock market's plunging, it'll have a value over 25. That's what you really need to know. And the gist of this article was that the VIX hit a low level under 10 that had not been seen since 1993. Now, in actuality, Terry, that's a meaningless measure because there were only 12 guys alive that understood the VIX in 1993. Nobody knew what it was. But more importantly in that article, and I've got it posted on my website, is they have a chart of the VIX. And the last time, as it was at this low, where nobody was afraid of anything, was December of 2006, beginning of 2007. There was no fear in the market. Lehman Brothers was a hot stock. Bear Stearns was brilliant. And the housing mortgage bubble was going to go forever. The stock market did continue to go up for many more months. But ultimately, it crashed to about, by about 50% from when the VIX hit those low levels. It, it's a black swan event. Yes, it only happened one time before, but black swans aren't repetitive. They aren't like uh, MACD and do certain thing every other week. Well, if you look at that lack of fear in the stock market and combine it with the Federal Reserve's coming announcement on balance sheet management, you got to say that there's a probably 50% risk in the U.S. equity market. I mean, people are talking crazy about what stocks are going to do and they what they think they're going to do. And we're likely to experience at least a 50% correction in the U.S. stock market. And it'll primarily be focused in the NASDAQ 100, all those wonderful little techie and internet stocks. Mm. The good news out of that is is gold and silver because when we get and it's not if we get it's a when we get now a 50 percent correction of the stock market gold is going to be double the price it is today i mean worrying about eight dollars down on gold today is is deck chairs on a titanic kind of nonsense you're going to see gold and silver and i'll even give you a time frame on this one Kerry. summer of 2019 mm-hmm by then, we will see gold double what it's at right here. As this stock market corrects, this utter nonsense and total lack of fear. 
I mean, listening to this discussion about Apple making a trillion-dollar cap, people, this company makes electronic toys. <laughs> they don't make a serious product at all. And, and in a real uh, world, gold is worth more than yeah. electronic toys. Yeah, well, you need silver and gold to, to make those toys for sure, mostly silver, but there's a little bit of gold in the connectors and stuff. Interesting, though, that we're really seeing history repeat itself. Well, it never repeats, as Mark Twain said. It rhymes, and it's rhyming big time now, isn't it, Ned? Yeah, I mean, this, here's, here's a measure that has only given two real signals in its entire existence. <laughs> and that's, you know, <laughs> there are few funny. measures that do that. And and people, you know, you only make one big decision in your life financially about every 10 years. Yeah, first is, is getting you know, married. The first, one's, the first decision's getting married or not getting married, right? <laughs> That's that's been an easy one for me a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> been there, done, been there, done that. You know. Yeah, and then the next, expensive. the next is uh, what job you take, and then I guess whether you buy a house or not uh, at some point, right? Right. Uh, take the promotion, right. whatever. But yeah, I think you're right. Once every ten years for the average person is all you uh, you just have to make those decisions right. And and what we're talking about, people need to understand, we're talking about diversification. Because we're not saying you're going to take every equity investment of any kind you own and get rid of it and put it your whole life in gold. As much as I believe in gold at this price, I would never say that. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's managing the diversification within your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And this is the time to manage your diversification, not sit there and wait. I mean, anybody that, that's 50 years old, even 40 years old or more, Mm -hmm. has had at least twice in their life is it, oh, I wish I'd have done this with my money instead of what I did do with it. And and this is one of those times to make a serious decision in your life whether you're going to ride this fantasy, and I say that again, especially with the Federal Reserve getting ready to change balance sheet policies, mm -hmm. which what does has that only mean, happened exactly? one time before. What does that mean, changing the balance sheet policy, Ned? All what right. are we to infer the from Federal that? The Federal Reserve has four trillion plus dollars of assets on its balance sheet that it bought during the lunacy called quantitative easing. <laughs> when they bought those bonds, they swapped Federal Reserve deposits or bonds with the banks. That means the banks now have two point three trillion dollars in free reserves. Free reserves are reserves they have in excess of required reserves. So this $2.3 trillion is sitting out there waiting for the banks to lend it out. Now, they haven't lent it out because the economy wasn't hot enough. Well, it's been growing enough that that money could be lent out. And if it is lent out, then we will see money creation and a good chance we'll see inflation. Now. Banks are sitting on this $2.3 trillion. The easiest thing to do with that money to earn more than nominal interest rate is lend it out for stock market credit. That's how margin debt got to a zillion dollars high in, I guess, February or March. They've been lending that money out to hedge fund managers to buy stocks and other crazy things. All right. When the Federal Reserve announces a policy, it's going to be something like we will sell $500 billion of bonds in the next 12 months. Something kind of subject to market conditions and labor market tightness and all that rabbit pellets that they put in their story. That money is going to come out of those free reserves. All right? Banks will swap deposits at the Federal Reserve for bonds. That means there's going to be less money to finance margin debt. So the first place it's going to get hurt when the Federal Reserve announces this policy is the lending of free reserves to hedge funds to buy stocks. And we're at a record high in borrowed money. I mean, the stock market would not be here 
where it's at if it was not for margin debt. And so the Federal Reserve, in actuality, what they're doing is declaring war on margin debt. And that is going to start pulling down this stock market even more. So that is the dangerous that's really lurking out there that we've never faced before. Because quite frankly, the Federal Reserve has never done anything as stupid as buying four plus trillion dollars in assets. So there's, there's two whammies coming here. The free money is going to disappear for the stock market, and people are too optimistic. Right. And I don't think anybody's looking at this change in balance sheet management at the Fed. Everybody knows it's out there, but they're not going to worry about it to the day it happens. Well, I'll tell the you. Day it, the yeah. day it happens, it's too late for little guys like me and me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. They actually, most of the bonds they bought, they've actually made money on. Uh, which people don't realize because from the interest the bonds have been paying, like not many of them really defaulted, and from the foreclosures that they, especially in places like where we live in Florida and in hotter markets, and refis because they're mortgage-backed securities. So when the mortgage is refinanced, which we had a huge refinancing boom, and then the general increase in real estate prices because they effectively wound up owning many of these homes, the money that they got here, that they spent, they didn't lose anything off of it. That's the, that's the ironic part here, Ned. Really is. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's true. So, I mean, you don't want to default on the Federal Reserve. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the Federal Reserve is the actual beneficial owner of a zillion of these foreclosures, and they never disclose it, of course. But what happened was, you know, all these mortgage-backed securities got tranched, meaning they split up, sliced and diced them. Here, you get the principal payments, you get the interest payments, and you get whatever is left over. As a result, nobody really owned the properties in question uh, because it was like, how do you figure out who actually owns the mortgage? But what the Federal Reserve did was they bought all the stuff so they could put it back together so they would actually own the mortgage that foreclosed on the house. And that's the real reason why foreclosure gate really never went anywhere. Yeah, the banks paid money to uh, to the federal government, but the mortgages were still enforceable and they still let them foreclose, except in a very few small instances, Ned. So the Federal Reserve made out like a thief on all of their mortgage-backed securities holdings. And you know that, but they're not talking about it. Yeah. And, and the, the other creeping thing in here that we don't know where it is, Gary, mm -hmm. is somebody somewhere has an asset liability problem. Yeah. The banks have, the banks have assumed forever that interest rates were going to stay low forever. Mm -hmm. And interest rate mix match, for those of you not familiar with banks, it means you borrow short and lend long. Somebody out there is going to be in trouble. Every cycle it happens. Yeah. We never know who it is until we read about it the next morning in the paper. Well, we know who <laughs> it's know. going to be because we just have to go back and look at who got burned the last time and assume that they learned absolutely nothing from their bailouts. So who is that going to be? It's going to be the too big to fails, with the exception of maybe Goldman Sachs. But the rest of them will all be knee-deep in the mismatched maturities. So we know that. <laughs> right? Is there and any it, question? And, and what's interesting about those events, Kerry, they're always a name that most people don't know. Yeah. It, it, somebody that's, you know, the, the third national bank of Vienna, Venice, Italy, yeah. someplace like that. Mm-hmm. It's an entity that people don't know. And so it's been so long that rates have been low. Yeah. We know somebody out there is mixed max. Mm -hmm. If only we could figure it out, we wouldn't have to work the next site. Yeah. Well, you're right. And, and there are entities that exist now, Ned, that didn't exist in the last crash that were kind of created to kind of offload all the garbage to. And then they, there were some opportunistic guys who just put together some entities. And yeah, there's going to be there's going to be mismatch. And will there be failures of counterparties? That's the question. Hey, while we have a little bit of time, agriculture. What's uh, what's the word there? 
agriculture is 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 just still in its early part of a bull phase. The bull the bear market ended in October. I follow 18 commodities, and 70 percent of them now have statistically positive trends. Wow. And and so I do that because I got to get away from my emotions and my price acres and be that. So 70 percent are in bullish trend, and and the sleeper right now is corn. I think we're going to see corn at $4 by the end of the year. In 2018, Gary, we're actually looking at a revival of the ethanol market. Really? Where And what's going on is oil discoveries have been so bad that we're going to talk be talking about a crisis in oil exploration this time next year. Last year, we only added 2.4 billion barrels of reserves with conventional oil drilling. That's 24 days of demand. We set a record low. So next year, the oil bulls, the ethanol bulls, and the corn bulls are going to be the ones that are going to be smiling. Yeah. So oil is going to go up, huh? Well, it's a good contrarian play, right? Well, it's the conviction, the contrarian play. If you look at the data put out by the Energy Agency, you cannot be bearish. If you look at today's supplies number versus Wall Street estimates, which is the same as betting on red or black, then you're bearish. Don't mm-hmm. let the charts dictate what's going to happen nine months from now. Yeah. Because the market's going to start looking at nine months from now and have a different attitude. So mm-hmm. corn and ethanol is what I'm looking at for next year. Interesting. Corn and ethanol, huh? Well, they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? So That's right. So, there's so I mean, you, yeah. can, you can either drink that corn or run your car on it, one or the other. <laughs> so corn liquor, uh, and you could run your, you could drink it and run your car with corn liquor. That's so, right. It's nothing more versatile. Yeah, so get ready for corn, $4 corn. Hey, if you want to find out more about Ned Schmidt's publications, go over to the Value View Gold Report and the AgriFood Value View, and you'll get all the info you need there about subscribing. Any questions, comments on this interview or any others we've done, send an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. Our Twitter feed is at Kerry Lutz. Our Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Ned, we will talk to you again real soon, my friend. Be well. All right. Take care, Kerry. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. ...of research, you know, just walking around. And MarketWatch.com ran... They've run two articles because they had to correct the date (laughs) on the VIX hitting a record low this week. Now, the VIX, you can go on the Internet and look it up. You still won't know anything (laughs) because it's the square root of the implied variance. What the heck does that mean? mean, Which does not mean a lot to many people. (laughs) But what it is is when we have a low value on the VIX, it means that Nobody is scared of the stock market. It's going to go straight up. It's only a matter of which day Apple hits a trillion-dollar market cap. And that's a value generally under 15. When everybody's scared and the stock market's plunging, it'll have a value over 25. That's what you really need to know. And the gist of this article was that the VIX hit a low level under 10 that had not been seen since 1993. Now, in actuality, Kerry, that's a meaningless measure because there were only 12 guys alive that understood the VIX in 1993. Nobody knew what it was. But more importantly in that article, and I've got it posted on my website, is they have a chart of the VIX. And the last time, as it was at this low, where nobody was afraid of anything, was December of 2006, beginning of 2007. There was no fear in the market. Lehman Brothers was a hot stock. Bear Stearns was brilliant. And the housing mortgage bubble was going to go forever. 
FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is May 9th, 2017. Well, gold is getting hit again, which we totally expected. We knew that this second quarter, getting close to the summer slam down, was right around the corner. Here we are. It's happening. Is it cause for alarm? Ned Schmidt is with us now. You know Ned Schmidt quite well. His erstwhile publications, the Valley View Gold Report and the Agri-Food Value View. Ned, welcome back. Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Doing great. So I'd be doing better if gold was doing better, but I totally get what's happening here. Uh, Tell us, the stock market seems to be the place to be, huh? Well, that's what it was. You know, even Superman had one fear, and that was kryptonite. I mean, the, the man of steel was afraid of something. For us to be afraid of nothing <laughs> show you how, uh, what's the word to describe us, Gary? Hubris. Foolish? Hubris. Hubris. Hubris kills a lot of people. It kills a lot of career. But what we were talking about earlier, Gary, was the VIX, the, the fear index that is called the volatility index. And and what brought it to mind, I was using my Crocodile Dundee, every equity investment of any kind you own and get rid of and put your whole life in gold. As much as I believe in gold at this price, I would never say that. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's managing the diversification within your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And this is the time to manage your diversification, not sit there and wait. I mean, anybody that's 50 years old, even 40 years old or more, mm-hmm. has had at least twice in their life is it, oh, I wish I'd have done this with my money instead of what I did do with it. And, and this is one of those times to make a serious decision in your life, whether you're going to ride this fantasy, and I say that again, especially with the Federal Reserve getting ready to change balance sheet policies, mm-hmm. which what does that only mean happened exactly? one time before. What does that mean, changing the balance sheet policy, Ned? Right. What are we to infer federal, from that? The Federal Reserve has four trillion plus dollars of assets on its balance sheet that it bought during the lunacy called quantitative easing. <laughs> when they bought those bonds, they swapped Federal Reserve deposits for bonds with the banks. That means the banks now have two point three trillion dollars in free reserves. Free reserves are reserves they have in excess of required reserves. So this $2.3 trillion is sitting out there waiting for the banks to lend it out. Now, the stock market did continue to go up for many more months, but ultimately it crashed to about by about 50% from when the VIX hit those low levels. It's a black swan event. Yes, it only happened one time before. But black swans aren't repetitive. They aren't like uh, MACD and do certain thing every other week. If you look at that lack of fear in the stock market and combine it with the Federal Reserve's coming announcement on balance sheet management, you got to say that there's a probably 50% risk in the U.S. equity market. I mean, people are talking crazy about what stocks are going to do and they what they think they're going to do. And we're likely to experience at least a 50% correction in the U.S. stock market. And it will primarily be focused in the NASDAQ 100, all those wonderful little techie and internet stocks. Mm. The good news out of that is is gold and silver because when we get and it's not if we get it's a when we get now a 50 percent crash in the stock market gold is going to be double the price it is today i mean worrying about eight dollars down on gold today is is deck chairs on a titanic kind of nonsense you're going to see gold and silver and i'll even give you a time frame on this one Kerry. summer of 2019 mm-hmm by then, we will see gold double what it's at right here. As this stock market corrects this utter nonsense and total lack of fear, 
I mean, listening to this discussion about Apple making a trillion dollar cap, people, this company makes it electronic toys. <laughs> they don't make a serious product at all. And and in a real uh, world, gold is worth more yeah. than electronic toys. Yeah, well, you need silver and gold to, to make those toys for sure. Mostly silver, but there's a little bit of gold in the connectors and stuff. Interesting, though, that we're really seeing history repeat itself. Well, it never repeats, as Mark Twain said. It rhymes, and it's rhyming big time now, isn't it, Ned? Yeah, I mean, this, here's, here's a measure that is only given two real signals in his entire existence. <laughs> and that's, you know, <laughs> there are a few measures that, that do that. And, and people, you know, you only make one big decision in your life financially about every 10 years. Yeah, first it, is, is getting you know, married. Over, <laughs> the, first one's, the first decision is getting married or not getting married, right? <laughs> That's that's been an easy one for me a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> been there, done, been there, done that. You know. Yeah, and then the next, expensive. the next is uh, what job you take, and then I guess whether you buy a house or not uh, at some point, right? Right. Uh, take the promotion, right. whatever. But yeah, I think you're right. Once every ten years for the average person is all you uh, you just have to make those decisions right. And and what we're talking about, people need to understand, we're talking about diversification. Because we're not saying you're going to take 